This is a toy spot on the Spider-Man Fiercest Foes Battle Cards figures. Today we're looking at Dive Bomber Green Goblin. really crapped on the Marvel Universe Green Goblin that I got. Um, I guess many people would probably say that's probably the worst figure or one of the worst figures to start a Marvel Universe collection with. Um, I don't know, but I really wasn't I wasn't happy with it. And then I happened to go in the stores and I noticed they had the Fiercest Foes Battle Cards Green Goblin. And I thought, well, I like Green Goblin. I don't think this figure could be as bad as the Marvel Universe and I picked it. I picked it up. Now I had already picked up a couple of figures already from the Fiercest Foes. The Venom was good, although missing knee articulation, which seemed like a given to me. And I also picked up the Black Costume Spider-Man. Uh, overall, both figures were really decent, so I thought this probably was going to be a safe bet as well. Uh, before we actually look at the figure, we'll look at the package. Uh, basic package with Spider-Man at the corner there. We got a really neat Green Goblin down below though. Very sinister looking. Look at that, eh? Uh, the picture also carries over on the side. And on the back, it says figure rides glider. Well, I would hope so, considering it is the Green Goblin and all. It says help Spider-Man battle his fiercest foes. Uh, apparently Spider-Man, in this continuity, battles his fierce fiercest foes with the trading cards. I don't know if you guys knew that. And down below, the other figures in this wave. Um, it actually doesn't say. It just says interlocking web tech accessories come with most figures. But as you can see, we've got a Venom. Now there is also a Venom. The one I picked up luckily had the, the tongue out variant. Uh, there is the superposable Spider-Man, uh, Scuba Spider-Man, and then the black costume Spider-Man, uh, which has some extra armor. Luckily you can take off, as you can see, with the uh, review that I've done of it. Um, but that's packaging. Now, I was disappointed with the Marvel Universe Green Goblin figure. Will I be disappointed with this figure? Maybe it will be better, maybe it will be worse. But what, the only way we'll be able to find out is what I'll do is open this package up and we will have a better look at the Fiercest Foes Battle Cards. We're going to be looking at the Green Goblin. Stay tuned. Now, I won't touch too much on the cards that they come with. Um, I covered more so with the uh, black costume Spider-Man, uh, but as you can see, it's got a picture of Green Goblin, Spider-Man, and the idea is uh, it's just basically rock, paper, scissors. Um, your friend holds out one card, you hold out the other card, and if one beats the other, I guess you get to punch him. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you get a point. Maybe you get to keep the, the kid's dog. I don't know. Um, if you do happen to come across a tie, uh, you, you can use this little decoder to determine, oh, Billy's got two, and uh, Teddy's got one, so Billy gets to keep his dog. Um, but that, that's it. I'm not bad, but I mean, these cards never last, these little gimmick games. Um, I mean, luckily they threw them with figures, if they had thrown them just with cards on their own. By next year, you would have never heard of these. They would already be gone. Uh, but I mean, neat. I mean, they're they're all right. They're all right. I'll say that. But uh, I mean, growing up from the 80s to now, there are so many of these little things that I've seen. Um, for anyone who remembers, here's a little blast from the past. Anyone remember Spinjas, the Ninja Tops? Anybody? Let me know down below if you guys remember those. Uh, but that is a good example of something that came. It was going to be big. And you never heard of them again. Spinjas. Alright, so let's have a look at Green Goblin. Well, I can tell you right off the bat, uh, color-wise and sculpt, this is a far superior Green Goblin than that of the Marvel Universe. Uh, yeah, he may not have as much of the articulation that the Marvel Universe figure does have, uh, but like face alone, look at the face, and you can't tell me that doesn't look awesome and that doesn't look like Green Goblin. Um, I think the issue I really had with the other Green Goblin 2, the Marvel Universe one, is that it was so 
washed out color wise like the green the purple everything else seemed very washed out with the figure and this green goblin though does not have that problem I mean it is it's a nice rich kind of goblin green and he's got the nice purple to him he's got the nice shading going on here uh, but his face is fantastic I love that uh, that just brings back memories of the old Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends cartoon and Green Goblin. Brings back memories. Um, yes, he doesn't have the articulation, though. That's the only downside. But I gotta say, paint-wise, he's already got uh, the one-up from, I think, the Marvel Universe Green Goblin. Uh, he's a much better, better figure. Um, Body-wise, he's good. I mean, I... You know, the bag, he's got all the bag and uh, all the other Goblin-esque things to him. Uh, the bag is a little rubbery, though. I don't know if this will rip in time, so I wouldn't suggest taking it off too too many times, because this might just rip. Um, he also has a pumpkin bomb, which uh, is really, really neat. Now, the pumpkin bomb on the other Green Goblin uh, pegged in via hole in his hand. He actually just stuck it into his hand. Uh, this Green Goblin, however, doesn't seem to have that. Uh, I don't know if it's just a case where you're supposed to... I guess he can kind of hold it like that. He can just palm it. He can palm the, the bomb. Palm the bomb. Is that the new slogan? Is that what they say in the streets? Palm the bomb. Uh, but you can hold it. And uh, it, it doesn't... It holds pretty good, actually, surprisingly, considering there's nothing that's holding it aside from uh, just the, the mold of his hand. Um, I would imagine though, if you're not careful and you bang it, yes, it will fall out. But as it is, it, it, it does a pretty good job of it. Now the one problem I do have with this figure, where I think the Marvel Universe did a better job, is the actual glider. Uh, glider's a bit ch chintzy on this figure. Um, while I didn't really necessarily like the Green Goblin Marvel Universe glider, I think it was a little nicer than this one. This one just actually feels really chintzy, like really, really, I don't know, flimsy. Um, the front of the glider is very basic in design. And the way they've actually sculpted it, there's no landing or any base on it to keep it up. It just basically... You know, it would be nice if there was a stand, or if there was even just little legs on the bottom. Something to kind of keep it leveled. But it's not bad. I mean, it, it isn't bad. Um, to put the figure into it, it's basic as every other goblin figure. You just basically sandwich his uh, hooked shoes in there. And you can bend the legs ever so slightly. And you've got yourself a very cool looking goblin. Oh, until he falls out. There we go. So he's pretty neat. Um, he doesn't seem to stay in the glider as well as I'd hoped. But again, I'm not going to judge too much on it. Uh, but he does come with his glider. Um, in the way of his articulation, he has a ball jointed head. Now his his hat kind of gets in the way in some areas, but you can still get a full movement. Um, he has the ball jointed shoulders. Uh, you can rotate the forearms. You can bend the elbow. You can also rotate the hand, or in this case, the glove. Now he has no articulation in the torso, nor does he have articulation in the waist. Um, some people might consider that to be a crucial point of articulation. Uh, sometimes I find putting articulation here on a small figure tends to make, make a figure very loose. So I'm not too bothered by the fact he doesn't have articulation there. Um, he has the ball jointed legs. Uh, you can rotate the thighs. You can rotate at the knee. You can also bend the knee. And no articulation in the foot. Um, I believe the Marvel Universe Green Goblin also had articulation in the foot, but there was just something about it. There was just too much to it that it made for a very loose, loose figure. Now, as an 80s kid, 
I'm going to tell you, uh, if, if given the choice, I think I prefer this goblin. I think I prefer this goblin to the Marvel Universe goblin. Uh, just because he, between the coloring, the sculpt on the mask, I mean, look at that. How cool is that? Um, I would say if you are looking for a Marvel Universe scale Green Goblin, I think it's better probably to go this route and get this guy here than to go with the Marvel Universe Goblin. Um, I just found at the end of the day I was really disappointed with that figure and not so disappointed in this guy. This guy really has impressed me. Um, yes, not all the articulation there that most people probably be looking for, but I think a good figure nonetheless. Um, this figure on a scale of 1 to 10, um, despite the fact that his goblin, his goblin glider is a little disappointing, um, I'm still going to give this, this goblin a 7, well, maybe a 6.5, 7. Uh, he is a nice figure. Um, so today's toy spot, give you one more look at him. Today's toy spot, we were looking at the Spider-Man Fiercest Foes cards uh, Dive Bomber Green Goblin. And don't let the the card game uh, ruin this figure for you, because uh, once you actually get this guy out of package, he is really, really nice. And I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.